this is Tim Hellman. This is Frank Eugene Hall. And this is Movie Talk. Today we're going to review the 2016 Oscar-nominated animated short films. Let's start with the highly commended additional films that played with them. If I Was God, The Loneliest Spotlight, Catch It, and The Short Story of a Fox and a Mouse. Which one of those do you like the best? The two that stood out for me were the Fox and the Mouse story, uh, which I thought was like pretty nice. Yet another charming story, so if you like charming stories, <laughs> okay. And then the Catch It one. Meerkats, they're pretty cool animals to begin with, so making a cartoon about meerkats was probably pretty good, but kind of pointless and not that logical. To me, those they were throwaway. Those were your favorites? Yeah. I like the one with the kid dissecting the frog, I think. That doesn't surprise me, I guess. No? <laughs> it was the most imaginative, I thought. I gave If I Was God three stars out of five. I'd give it maybe two and a half. I gave The Loneliest Spotlight three stars out of five. That was the Bill Plumpton one about yeah. the stoplight. Sort of a local hero from yeah. Oregon. To me, that was also a little pointless. I would give that one a two. I think that there was maybe a better way to go about what they were trying to do. I gave Catch It two and a half stars out of five. I would give it three because it was well done for what it did. I'd give the short story of a fox and a mouse two and a half stars out of five. The artwork was really well done. The whole style created a mood that was very good. So I'd give it a three. And then the Oscar nominated short films included Sanjay's Super Team. It's a seven minute Pixar animated short film which accompanied the good dinosaur in theaters. It tells the story of an Indian boy who imagines the Hindu gods his father has taught him to believe in as mighty superheroes. It was directed by veteran animator turned director Sanjay Patel. Patel used his own childhood as influence for the story. Yeah, I thought that was a good father-son story. I felt the animation was the well animation done. The animation was the best, I think, at all. Yeah, I, th I think it was excellent. I hadn't quite seen those sort of effects in a Pixar movie before. I liked that about it, and I thought it was emotional at the end. Yeah. Um, I'd give that one three and a half. Yeah, I would too. I felt that... For me, the insight into Hindu culture was, was a gift. I grew up religious and being forced to go to church when I didn't really want to. I'd rather, you know, have watched cartoons. <laughs> so like you that. related to the little yeah, so kid? I think a lot of kids can relate to that. In the Hindu gods as kind of a bonding between the father and mm -hmm. the son, but the totally different views of what the gods yeah. are, are about. Another Oscar-nominated short film was Prologue. Six-minute British animated short film about a gruesome battle between Spartan and Athenian warriors 2,400 years ago. As seen through the eyes of a young girl. It's extremely violent and it contains animated full frontal male nudity. It was directed by Richard Williams. What did you think of this one? If it hadn't been there, I think it would have been okay. As a movie to go see in the theater, like to bring your kids to. Everything else was okay. Everything else was good. This one sort of totally changed that. And so. Except for the world of tomorrow is kind of dark. Fortunately, they put it at the end and they had a little warning, a, a little warning before it came on <clears throat> to give you time to hustle your kids out of the theater. But really, I saw it as maybe an age old restatement of the female view of male. War. Fire. Now it's male and female war. Not one yeah. Military. Right. Yeah. So maybe the next version of it should have a uh, you know men and women <laughs> fighting each other in full frontal nudity and extreme <laughs> violence, and then who would be running re recoiled in horror? Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe, Kino. maybe an alien. <laughs> Kino. Or, or the the cats. So I'd give that one three and a half stars. You would. It's kind of groundbreaking. Pushing breaking. boundaries. Pushing boundaries. So, yeah. I mean, I get credit for that. <laughs> oh, really? It's good to push people out of their comfort zone. Yeah, but I, I, I judge art not by you know the how others think of it and whether they put. It's like, is it art that you uh, either moves you forward or does it make something that you would like to live with? Would you like to re to but see this again? But you also have to look at art as how it affects everyone. Y not, right. Not just your own personal taste. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I, I, does, is this something that people will will see again and again? Are they going to yeah. show it? You know. So what is the impact? Once of enough for that. <laughs> right. And if it's once of enough, and it's kind of a restatement of what you already know. So I, I can't give it three and a half. I give it two and a half. Okay. Another Oscar nominated animated short was We Can't Live Without Cosmos. A 16 minute Russian animated short film about two best friends who become cosmonauts together. It was written and directed by Konstantin Bronzit. What did you think of this one? I enjoyed it. The animation was good. 
although not not breakthrough. To me, it told yeah. me a lot about the Russian view, maybe, of the world and of space. Cosmos means something that's in harmonious order. We can't live without harmonious order, thus saith Putin. It's sort of an interesting yeah. view of that, but space is magical, and they are aspiring to it. That was an interesting backdrop for me in seeing this. Also cosmonauts. And cosmonauts. Yeah, there's something about a longing for harmonious order in the Russian heart coming out of this. I give that one four stars. I would give it four also. Another Oscar-nominated animated short film was Bear Story. It's a beautiful 11-minute Chilean animated short film about an elderly, lonely bear that tells his life story to others through a magical, mechanical diorama. It was directed by Gabriel Osorio Vergas. What do you think of this one? It was very effective. It's one that kind of does stick with you because it's digging into your psyche and pulling things out. It sort of makes it seem like this whole thing of oppression and escape and loss is a repeating cycle. Yeah. It's also about oversharing, which oh. I've been known to do. Like he tells his whole life story to everyone that oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> in a he's not posting it on Facebook. In a robotic way, but what's, not what's, just, what's the difference? He's uh, not posting it. Oversharing is oversharing. He's what? not. The format doesn't matter. Like <laughs> he uses a diorama, some people use Facebook. Yeah, I wonder what his Facebook <laughs> wall looks like. I would give it three and a half. I give it four. Another Oscar nominated animated short film of 2016 was World of Tomorrow. It's a 17 minute sci fi animated short written, produced, directed, edited, and animated by Don Hertzfeld that tells the story of a young girl who's taken on a tour of the future by her future clone. It was the wittiest, I think. It was. There's, there's, the there's, most clever. We had to certainly pay attention. It was stimulating thought. Uh, uh, how does that work? Oh, I see. I had um, great social commentary and scientific ideas were all spot on, I thought, like where we could be going in the future with a lot of stuff. Right. All my singularity uh, manic friends talking about uploading your brain to a computer and so on. But the whole, touching on the this. whole commentary about how the rich people could afford to do all this and the poor people had kind to of like drift do away. These drastic, <laughs> do these drastic things that were dangerous. To, you know, like yeah. time traveling and underground and into the past. And in yeah, in, in the and the lower class are basically like just drifting off the earth, floating off into space. Yeah, it was just like very class-based. It was a brilliant commentary. commentary on society. Yeah, and the little girl was his niece, the director's niece, and they kind of just filmed her just saying stuff and used it. Yeah, and I thought that worked well. The, the phrase that came back to me afterwards, which is one of the reasons I, I, I value the movie, um, it says now is the envy of all the dead. Summed up a lot of what the, the movie was about, just chasing now through all time. I'd give this one four and a half stars. I'd go four. Overall, the movie, what would you give it? Three and a half stars. Yeah, three and a half stars. There I agree was, with that. There was no paper man. Yeah. That was a classic for me. Go grab it while it's there. See it in the theater with your kids. They take him out at the end. <laughs> Before Pro Hawk. Yeah. Unless you want to see yeah. Jazz Hills being mutilated. Yeah.